ti, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, my Lord. Oh, Jesus, faithful Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus, Lord, your presence makes me whole. Thank you, wonderful Jesus. Your presence makes us whole. Blessed Redeemer, glory to your name forevermore. King of all the earth, your presence makes us whole. And we give you glory and praise today, mighty Redeemer. There's nothing that compares to your presence, Lord. Your presence makes us whole. And we worship your mighty name today. We give you praise and glory, wonderful Lord Jesus. For indeed, your wonderful presence makes us whole, glorious Redeemer. Blessed be your name today. Hallelujah. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Savior Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus. My dear Jesus, Father, your presence makes us whole. Thank you, Lord, for your glorious presence right now. You said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Thank you, blessed Redeemer that your presence makes us whole thank you wonderful savior indeed your presence makes us whole blessed be your name lord jesus hallelujah to your name glory to god Jesus, Jesus, oh Jesus, our King Jesus, wonderful Jesus, Lord your presence makes us whole thank you wonderful lord jesus oh gee, jesus precious jesus our lord Oh, Jesus, Father, Jesus, amazing Jesus, Lord, your presence makes us whole. Lord, we thank you, we give you praise and glory today that your presence is with us and your holy presence makes us whole. Blessed be your name, King of all the earth. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Minister to us today by the Holy Ghost. Touch every life. Set the captives free. Bring peace and joy to every heart today. Save the unsaved, O oh God, around the world. 
and in this place today. Jesus, we vow to give you all the praise and all the glory. It's not by power, it's not by mind, but by the Holy Ghost. Thank you, blessed Master. Thank you, Lord. Good God, we give you praise. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Amen, amen. Welcome to the Spirit and the Word tonight. Welcome to those of us who are here in the in the house and those who are watching around the nations of the earth. Be ready for an encounter with God's Word and God's power today because Jesus is here with us. Hallelujah. Now today we are going to be looking at the importance of faith in God. The importance of faith in God. That's our focus for tonight. But we are reminded that we have our monthly program coming up April 24th by 10 a.m. right here called Healing Love. Healing Love for the Armenians and the Nations. Special medical service right here, 24th of this month. It's a Monday, 10 a.m. We do that once every month. The last Monday of each month, we are here for this wonderful, life-changing miracle service. Last Monday of each month. But tonight, we are hearing God's word on the importance of faith in God. Faith in God is vital. We'll look at God's word now and see why it's so important to have faith in God. Before then... I ask Brother JP to please come and share with us some testimonies of those lives God has changed through the ministry. We broadcast every week into Liberia, Sierra Leone, and Ghana by radio, and God is transforming lives in those nations of the earth, and even also here in America, in, so in Pakistan, miracles are happening. Brother JP, please come share with us some good news of God's doings in our midst. Praise God. Dwarf and barrenness, demons are defeated. For years now, my husband and I have been trusting and believing God for a child. Did all we could in our own ways and big ways. Visited so many hospitals and saw so many doctors, but to no avail. A friend of ours who lives in the capital city of Monrovia, who is a regular listener to Healing Moments, also got delivered from a demonic dwarf, demon spirit, which tormented her for eight years. She was set free by the Lord just listening to the program and laying her hands on the radio one evening as Apostle prayed. Then she said she has never encountered that dwarf spirit in her dreams any longer, so she asked my husband and I to tune into 107.7 or 101.7 every Thursday at 8 p.m. to make a long story short. We did listen and continued to listen. To be precise, when the Apostle Israel Jima asked anyone listening who was believing God for a child or children to lay hands on the radio, wow, my God, glory to God, my husband and I placed our hands on the radio that night, joining in faith with, with Apostle. We went back to one of the same hospitals and doctors which we were once, once had visited. Wow, my wife is one month pregnant, indeed, Lord is Jesus is Lord. We serve a miracle working God. Hallelujah. Praise God for the life and radio ministry of Apostle Jima in Liberia. Hope to see you one day in Liberia. Yes, Mr. and Mrs. Thomas Doki, Bomi County, Liberia. All glory and praise be unto him who sits upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. Jesus is touching over 30 million souls through Healing Moments, Liberia, and Pakistan every week. Glory to God. Glory to God. Dear Apostle, I realize that in order for God to forgive me, I needed to forgive others who have wronged me. It all started when I developed a sickness that caused my left hand to feel numb and unable to move. I couldn't do anything with my hand, and... I was wondering why God has not answered my prayers. Last week, when you were praying for us, I knelt down and cried to the Lord for help. 
It was when I remembered my sister that I had stopped talking to for some reason. I quickly called her and asked her to forgive me. She said she was glad I called and we made up on our differences. The next day, when I woke up, I could feel my left hand moving normally again. I was so happy and want to share this happiness with a member of Healing Moments program. When we forgive others of our heaven, our Heavenly Father will forgive us and save us through the name of Jesus Christ. Anatia, Monrovia, Liberia. Glory to Jesus. Isn't that wonderful? Just like Jesus. That's the workings of the Lord Jesus Christ. The first testimony, that fellow was being attacked by an evil spirit, a dwarf demon. It's called dwarf because it appears like a human form, but extremely short, very short. That demon afflicting her in her dreams for eight years. We pray to them every week on radio in Liberia, Ghana, Sierra Leone. After I share the word, I ask them, lay your hands on the original as we pray with you for God to give you a miracle. You are far away where they are in those countries. As they touched that region, we begin to pray, the power of God begins to move. So that dwarf demon was cast out, she was delivered. So she now told somebody else. Well, I listened to this radio program and God set me free from this dwarf devil. Why not just listen in also? God can give you a miracle of conception, which you have been seeking for years. They did. And God gave them a miracle to it. Our God is a God of miracles. He does miracles all the time. Mighty and glorious is he, is he. We thank him and give him glory for those testimonies. There are just few. We get testimonies every week from these nations. Father, was some guy who was listening to us some time ago. This guy's name is Joshua in Liberia. He was born blind. He is a man, married man with kids, but born blind. Never saw his wife's face, his kids' face, his parents' face. We well, listen to us alert on radio, and uh, we are praying for the sick. We say, if you need a miracle, touch the original as we pray. As we began to pray, he said, he saw a man robed in white appear to him. He was blind, born blind. And told him, see. He opened his eyes, he began to see. He screamed, I can see. The whole house scattered for joy. The whole neighborhood went wide. They all know him. He has been blind all his life. Till now, he sees perfectly. To God be the glory. So God is doing miracles like this all over the nations of the earth. And we decided, God led me to be doing this here in Fresno once every month. Last Monday of the month. We have a special miracle service where folks can come in person, those who are in the neighborhood, and receive the same power of God in their lives for mighty miracles to happen to them. And also here every Monday we have this meeting here that is you can we are welcome to be here every Monday. You experience God's power, but it's broadcast across the nations of the earth. Right now in Pakistan, we have been watched on Bright Star Christian TV right now live watched by about 20 million people. We got testimonies from them as well, how God is transforming lives. A man wrote me in Pakistan. His name is Muhammad Umar. Muhammad Umar wrote to us and said, he was dying with hepatitis C. That's the testimony that puts, puts tears in my eyes. Doctors told him, you need a new liver. He said, I have no money for a new liver. Okay, wait for death. He was waiting for death. Waiting for death. When he's brother turned the tv to where we were on he said once his tv station turned to where we were he felt the physical hand touch him in the shoulder nobody was there he said who touched me somebody touched me that was the lord so he now focused on the on the program 30 minutes program but 20 minutes into the program he began to cry he didn't know why but i know why the holy ghost came on him with the love of the father he was overwhelmed by the love of god he went to sleep that night, woke up in the morning, all symptoms disappeared. The following week, he had to follow up with his physicians. He went, they did ultrasound, did blood sample, did everything. They asked him, what happened to you? You have a new liver. Jesus did that for him. That's the God we serve, the God of miracles, God of miracles. And it's a privilege to know this Jesus, to serve him, to follow him. It's a privilege of a lifetime. There's no better place to be than to be with Jesus. No place is better than to be with this wonderful, wonderful Savior. Praise God. Well, I feel His presence right now. 
let's please just bow our heads right now and just begin to say jesus i give you praise Tell him, Jesus, I praise you. Jesus, I just worship you. Just adore him in your own words right now. Glory to God. Just adore him right now. Yes, Lord, your presence makes us whole. We who are here in this hall, we just adore Jesus. Those who are watching around the earth, wherever you are, just begin to worship the King of heaven right now. Begin to glorify Jesus right now. Jesus, we thank you, Lord. Lord, your presence makes me whole. It's your presence that transforms us. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Precious Jesus. Awesome Jesus, my Lord Jesus, wonderful Jesus, Lord is your presence that makes us whole. It's not my power. It's not by might, it's not by eloquence of speech, it's not by human abilities, it is simply by God the Holy Spirit. It's a work of the one who sits upon the throne, the Holy One of Israel, the God of Jacob. It's a good God, it's a merciful God, it's a gracious God, and it's a miracle-working God. He is here with us right now in this place. And anywhere you are watching is with us right now. His glory is moving right now. Praise you, wonderful Jesus. Let's still focus on him some more and just praise him. Just adore him. Take your eyes off of any man. Place your eyes upon Jesus. Place your eyes upon the one who died and rose from the dead. His name is Jesus, our Redeemer. Is our only hope. Is our preserver, our protector. Is our holiness and our righteousness. Jesus, oh Lord Jesus, Master, your presence makes us whole. There's nothing like your presence, Lord. Jesus. Bande go sapratus. Oh, Jesus. My Lord Jesus. Let's praise him some more. He's worthy. The King is worthy of our praise. He's worthy of all honor. Jesus. Wonderful Jesus, Master, your presence makes us whole. Blessed be your name, King of all the earth. Wow, the importance of faith in God. The importance of faith in God. I, I had to specify faith in God. I was going to speak about the importance of faith. But I remember every human being has faith. Everybody has faith. Some folks have faith in themselves. Faith is absolute belief. Some have faith in themselves. Some have faith in other people. Some have faith in science. Some have faith in human knowledge. So people have faith in different things. But the most vital faith we need is faith in God. Faith in God. Folks who believe in evolution, they have faith in science. They will tell you that man uh, evolved from ape, from animals. Why? They were told and they believed it. They have faith in science. 
When you have faith in God, they laugh at you. They also have faith. All human beings have faith. Depends on what your faith is placed in. If your faith is placed in science, God have mercy on you. If your faith is placed in God, you are in the best place to be in. Faith in God is very important for all humans. One reason why it's so vital is because Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6 tells us that without faith, it's impossible to please God. To please God. Now, without faith in, in science or in people, we could please God. Without faith in ourselves, we could please God. But without faith in God, we can't please Him. We can't please Him. That's why faith in God is very crucial. If you don't please God, you are in trouble big time. Now, you can survive without pleasing people. And many times, folks will tell us the truth. They say, we, when we are trying to please people, many times we, we are doing the wrong things. We just want folk, folks to give us thumbs up and, and just be on our side. Whereas we, we are not in the right side ourselves. So you can be pleasing to people and be displeasing to God at times. It does happen like that. You can please uh, uh, the culture and displease God Almighty. But the most important place to be in is when you please the God who made the heavens and the earth. It says here that without faith, pleasing God is impossible. But when we choose to believe God, when we choose to have faith in God, our lives begin to please God himself. Our lives begin to bring delight God himself. When the Lord came to the earth, Jesus was baptized in the Jordan River. We are told in, 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 the, in the Gospels that when John put, put him in the river, baptized him, when he came out of the water, heaven opened. And the voice of the Father said, This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. The Father was well pleased with Jesus. And the Father wants to be well pleased with you and I as well. But the pleasure of the Father is non-existent when there's no faith in God. God wants us to have faith in him so we can enjoy his divine pleasure. It's important to have faith in God because faith in God opens us up to the pleasure of the Father, to the delight of God Almighty. Now, for God so loved the world, God gave Christ to die for us. The love of God made God to give Christ to be our Savior. He died on the cross, shed his blood for our redemption. However, that sacrifice of Christ becomes useless unless there is faith mixed with it. Ephesians 2 verse 8 says, By grace are you saved through faith. Ephesians 2 8. By grace we are saved by the grace of God. We are delivered by the grace of God. Not because of our good works. We are saved. We are born again by the grace of God. Say amen to that. Yeah, we are saved by the grace of God. So we are by, for by grace are you saved through faith. But that, so the grace of God becomes available to us when we apply faith to God's word. When we have faith in God, that gives us access to the grace of God. And that is why faith in God is vital. Faith in God gives us access to the grace of God. If we don't have faith in God, we will not access the grace of God. The grace of God is only accessible through faith in God. When we have faith in God, not only do we enjoy God's pleasure, we access God's grace. We have access to the grace of God. And the grace of God is what makes men what they are in the eyes of God. You can't make yourself. Don't believe in all these self-made theories. No, no, no. It's God that makes men. In fact, Jesus Christ told Peter and John, say, follow me. And I will make you fishers of men. God is the maker of men. God makes us. God makes us. But the grace of God that enables God to make us is only accessible when we walk by faith in God. We have to believe God's word. We have to believe the gospel. Many folks have heard the gospel over the years. They have heard the good news of Christ. But they have never experienced the power of it because they have not had faith in God. We need to apply faith in God's word to enjoy what grace has provided for us. Jesus will not die twice. 
But yes, in the radio program, Healy Moments, I was telling them something about Jesus' sacrifice. Jesus will not die twice. He died only once. So when somebody comes to accept Christ as Savior and becomes saved, Christ does not die for them afresh. No, he died only once for the whole world. However, even though he already died for us, we can enjoy it until we have faith in God. It's faith in God that gives us access to the grace and all the blessings that God has for us. I must say that God has blessings for all of us. God has blessings more than we can imagine. But those blessings cannot be assessed if we do not have faith. Faith in God is vital, not only because we secure God's pleasure with it, we also have access to God's grace through faith. Through faith. The grace of God is an amazing thing. The grace of God makes God to do for us what we can't do for ourselves. That's the wonder of God's grace. We couldn't save us, He did. We can't heal us, He does. We can't bless us, He does all that for us. We can't make ourselves holy, He makes us holy. God does that because of His grace. But that grace is only accessible through faith. That's why faith in God is extremely important in our lives. Not only because it secures God's pleasure, it also secures God's grace. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38, says something very vital along this line. Hebrews 10, verse 38, says, Now the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. Faith in God is vital because with faith in God, really live the life God wants us to live. Without faith in God, we will not be able to live the life God has planned for us. Now, the just shall live by faith. So without faith, the just will not have that life that God has planned for them. It takes faith in God not just to assess his pleasure, to assess his grace, but to assess his life. His life. Our faith in God is vital because that faith in God gives us access to the life of God. Wow, the very life of God Himself. Say the just shall live by faith. When we walk by faith in God, our life becomes the life that God designed for us to live. It's all by our faith in God. If we have no faith in God, instead of that life, we have the opposite, which is perdition. That's why in, in, the, in the same verse, Hebrews 10, 38 says, But if any man draw back from faith, my soul will have no pleasure in him. Remember what, what we said initially? Faith is in God is right there because with faith in God, you secure God's pleasure. And it says here, if you draw back from faith, God says, I have no pleasure in you. The same thing we said earlier. So faith in God secures God's pleasure. Not to draw back from faith in God is to lose God's pleasure. That's what he's saying there. So if any man shall draw back, my soul have no pleasure in him. My soul is not pleased with him. I'm not, I'm not happy with him when he draws back from faith. Now, let's get it clear. God loves everybody. And God loves everybody every time. God does not hate any human being. God made us in his image. He loves all of us, right? God loves all of us every time. Whether we miss it or we didn't miss it, God still loves us. God loves all human beings forever. He made us in his image. However, even though God loves all human beings, this scripture tells us if we draw back from faith, God has no pleasure in us anymore. That's why faith in God is extremely vital. Everyone who wants to understand God's ways must make sure they are in faith in God all the time is key is key faith in god is key to living the life god wants us to live if any man draw back from faith my soul will cease to delight in him wow god forbid god forbid that god cease to delight in us no we want god to be happy with us is that right say amen to that we want god to be happy with us we want god to be pleased but god's word says if you draw back from faith my soul has no pleasure in you. Let's look at the next verse, verse 30, verse 39. 
it says, but we are not of them who draw back into perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Which means those who draw back from a life of faith in God, he said they draw back into perdition, meaning they draw back into destruction. So faith is in God is vital because faith in God protects us from perdition. Faith in God protects us from the word perdition means destruction. Faith in God protects us from being destroyed, from self-destroying ourselves or from others destroying us. Faith in God protects us from perdition. We see how important faith in God is. Faith in God secures God's pleasure over our lives. God looks at us and says, oh, behold, my daughter, my son, in whom I am well pleased. Not because we are in ourselves perfect, no, but because we have faith in God. That faith in God, that faith in God's word gives us access to the grace that is God's. So faith in God is important because the faith in God helps us not just to secure God's pleasure and to assess God's grace and to protect us from perdition. That faith in God helps us to stay on the path of salvation till the end of our lives. And when folks, there are some folks today who used to have faith in God, they are backsliding for whatever reason. Now that's why Hebrews 10 speaks of that possibility. Because if any man draw back, meaning some can draw back, that's the meaning of that. Hebrews 10, 38 again. Now, the judge shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, which means many can draw back. And I know some who have drawn back. They have drawn back. Drawing back is possible. That's why God said it. If it couldn't happen, God wouldn't, talk, wouldn't say it. So, drawing back from a life of faith in God is possible. And I pray for you and for myself. And for all those who are watching us today that none of us will draw back onto perdition. Drawing back is, is a call into destruction. This is why faith in God is very vital. Some folks laugh at us because we are people of faith. We have faith in God. They don't know what we know. If they knew what we know, they will come on their knees begging God to let them have faith in him as well. But having faith in God secures your forever. Secures your forever. Life on earth is momentary. No, no matter how, more, how long we live, one day we're going to die. It's important to every man who wants to die. The righteous die, the unrighteous die. The rich die, the poor die. The sick die, the healthy die. The young die, the old. Death rate for human beings is 100%. Everybody will die. The thing is this, those who die with faith in God, they are guaranteed of a place with God in heaven forever and forever and forever. That's honestly why faith in God is very vital. Faith in God preserves your forever. Your forever. Some folks will tell you, well, uh, there's nothing like heaven or hell. Once you die, that is it. When I hear those folks, I laugh at them. I ask them, have you died before? How do you know? How, how are you sure? Have you died before? You have not died yet. You are saying when you die, that's it. You, you don't know yet. Die first. Maybe two that are your death, then we can know. You can, you can know whether there is heaven or hell. The fact is, the one who created death, the one who created life, Jesus, who knows death and hell, he makes it clear to us, heaven is real and hell is real. He told us that clear in, in the word of God. In fact, Jesus preached more about hell than any other person in the Bible. Jesus spoke about a story about Lazarus and the rich man. Remember that parable, Luke, the 16th chapter? That is not only a parable, it's a story. It happened. There was a man called Lazarus. There was a man, that man, they found out his name was Mr. Divers. Divers and Lazarus were real men that lived on this earth. One had faith in God, one had no faith in God. Then both of them died because everybody dies. The one that had faith in God was taken by angels to paradise. Abraham's bosom. The one that had no faith in God found himself in flames, in hell, being tormented with the, in the flames of hell. He was in agony. 
He looked up his head and saw Lazarus was afar off and Father Abraham. Father Abraham, please, this torment is too much. I don't know. Maybe that man may have been among those who say, if you die, that's the end. But when he died, he found out he was wrong. So he said, this, this torment is too much. Send Lazarus, dip his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I'm tormented in this flame. Luke chapter 16. That's the consequence of, having, of not having faith in God. So faith in God protects your eternal destiny. Faith in God through Jesus Christ protects your forever. In the next 800 billion years, you'll be rejoicing because you have faith in God. I didn't say the next 80 days. I mean 800 billion years. That's forever. You will still be rejoicing because you have faith in God today. Those folks who despise those who have faith in God, sad to say, they will be in flames, in torment like that rich man forever and ever and ever. Very sad. It breaks my heart when I think of folks who, who die without faith in God, go to hell. It breaks my heart. But I'm not God. I can't save nobody. Jesus died to save all of us. To enjoy that salvation, we must have faith in him. Remember, we began from Ephesians 2, uh, 2 8 by faith, grace, as you say, true faith. There must be faith in God for us to be saved. If you have no faith in God, there is no hope for salvation. So, why is faith in God vital? Number one, it secures God's pleasure over our lives. God looks at us and He says, That's my precious daughter. That's my precious son. I'm happy with them. Not because they are perfect in all they do. No, no. But because they have faith in Christ. They have placed their faith in God's word. In God's son. God has pleasure in them. And also, our faith in God gives us access to this mystery called the grace of God. The grace of God. Faith in God protects us from perdition. From destruction. Faith in God procures or secures our forever, our forever. It's therefore extremely wise to live a life of faith in God in this world. Extremely wise. It is unwise to live a life of faithlessness in God. Extremely wise. Jesus asked the question, what shall a man gain if he has the whole world and then loses his own soul? Nothing. Nothing. So the consequence of not having faith in God is eternal doom. But glory be to God, we have faith in God. Say amen to that. We are here today because we have faith in God's word. Hallelujah. And there's a blessing for us. The blessings are enemies. The blessings are beyond what we can tell with our mouth. The blessings are far reaching and they are forever and forever. And forever. So faith in Almighty God secures our forever. Our forever. Those who have faith in God through the Lord Jesus Christ, they are guaranteed of a secure eternity. If there's no other benefit of faith in God, this one is enough. This singular benefit is enough. Faith in the Lord Jesus Christ pro uh, protects our forever. You are guaranteed the day you breathe your last here, you appear with Jesus in glory. That's, there's nothing that compares to that. You know, don't believe this idea some folks have that uh, everybody who dies goes to heaven. No, it's not true. It's not true. Some folks will say, oh, okay, no, so the person died, now they have become an angel. No, that's not true. That's not true. In fact, I went to Los Angeles some years ago to do a, a funeral in, in a certain uh, church. This lady who died was a Christian, a believer. So in the, in the course of the funeral, the Lord spoke to me what I will never forget in my life. Father, God, God actually asked me a question. I said, wow. He, said, he asked me, he said, why do people, people who refuse to go to my house when they were on the earth think they will go to my house in heaven when they die. I said, really? Wow. He said, what do, what do people think? People who refuse. 
Not that they cannot go. They just refuse to go. Not that they are sick. No, they just don't want to go. They go everywhere else but the house of God. They go to do shopping. They go to uh, work. They go to visit friends. Church, no. And they just refuse to go to church. Not because they cannot go. Not because they don't have the means. They just don't want to go. And that's the house of God. So God says, if they refuse to go to my house on earth, why do you think when they die, I will not say, come to my house in heaven? Now, Jesus in John 14 says, my father's house, there are many mansions. He calls heaven the fa his father's house. And in 1 Timothy, uh, Paul told Timothy, the church is the house of God, the pillar and ground of the truth in Timothy. So, so the, the, the church is the house of God we can see physically here. Not that God lives in the building as it were, because our bodies are the temples of God. God lives in us. But since the church is, 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 is temples gathered to worship, that's the house of God. To those who refuse to go to God's house here on earth, when they die, they are hoping that they will, for whatever reason, find themselves in God's house there. It doesn't work that way. Because for folks who refuse to go to God's house here on earth, one month, two months, three months, four months, five months, when they refuse to go to God's house, I guarantee you what I'm saying now, their life will become a life of sin along the line. That's the problem. The problem is not just not going to church. It is the consequence of not going to church. The consequence is sin will enter the people's lives. Folks who used to live a, a clean life now go back to things they used to do before that were wrong. Before they know, they find themselves in those habits that were sinful, that they left to give their life to Christ. Why? Because they cease to obey God, to go to God's presence. They are not more to give from the fountain of God's living word. They are not communicating with other believers. They are, because of that, they begin to find themselves in things they didn't think they would do again. Before you know, they have gone down. That's why they can be lost. So he says that in Hebrews 10, if they draw back, my soul has no pleasure in them anymore. This is why we shout from the rooftop. Your faith in God, keep your faith in God. Don't allow life's troubles to steal your faith from you. Don't allow your trials, the death of a loved one, or a disappointment relationship, or your health problems. Don't allow anything whatsoever to steal your faith in God from you. Don't allow it. Because the enemy will try to steal your faith and steal my faith. I guarantee you that. He will, have, he will tell you several reasons why you should give up your faith in God. He will give you different reasons. Well, I went to the church and uh, that sister saw me. She didn't say hi to me. So I'm no more going to worship God. Or, you know, I went to church and um, they didn't welcome me into the church. So I won't go anymore. Or, I mean, strange things. Oh, I went to the church and uh, I didn't feel happy. So I won't go anymore. No. There's no reason not to worship God. Because you don't go to church for people. You go to church to worship the Lord himself. He's the one you come to worship. So when somebody, for example, somebody offend you. Now I watched something some recently that I, I told my wife. See what I watched though. I think it makes sense. They did some little drama. One, uh, one young man did a little drama. He's online. He said... Wow, it's interesting. He said, some folks, they go to church, they get offended, they stop going. He said, but those folks, they go to their house. In their house, they get offended, they keep going to their house. They go to their job, they get offended, they keep going to their job. They go and see friends, get offended, they keep going there. He said, why is it the church, they, keep, they stop going? It's because the devil wants us to throw away our faith in God. That's the bottom line. But thank God for your life here today and those who are watching. You are here today because you have faith in God. I've come to challenge you to keep your faith in God alive. Say amen to that. Keep your faith in God alive. Don't allow anything to steal your faith in God.
keep your faith in God alive. Read your Bible. Study your Bible every single day. Spend time in prayer on your own in your house. Stay close to Jesus. Feed upon the Word of God. Be in God's house, the church, to hear the Word of God. Love your neighbor. Love yourself. Love the Lord. Stay close to God. Maintain faith in God to the very end. Keep your faith in God to the very end. Don't allow things to steal your faith from you. I've come across many folks who told me, oh, I used to go to church. I used to go to church. I said, what happened to you? Well, long story. Well, I used to. What, what other is I used to? What happened to you? The enemy stole your faith. Stole your faith. Stole your faith. This is a challenge to all of us, including myself. I must never allow the enemy to steal my faith in God. I will never let him steal my faith in God. Our faith in God must be kept alive. We must stay close to Jesus. We must stay close to the word of God. We must not allow ourselves to begin to doubt God and doubt the word of God. No, we don't do that. If you begin to doubt God and doubt God's word and doubt God's care and doubt God's kindness, you are drawing back from faith, from faith. Before you know, you find yourself in a place of faithlessness in God. And that's not God's plan for you or me. God wants us to have faith in him all through our life's journey. I don't know how many years I have left. This year, I'm 62. I don't know how many years I have left. But I know that God will give me a long life. You don't know how many years you have left either. We we'll believe God will give you long life as well. But the fact of the matter is, every single day draws us closer to exiting the earth. That's the fact of life. That's why our faith in God must be kept intact. I've gone through things in my life. The devil has come against me in different ways, trying to make me to drop my faith in God. I said, no, I will never drop my faith in God. I have faith in God. I love Jesus. I will stick to him forever and ever. Glory be to God. You know, many folks don't realize the kind of battles that men of God face. People don't realize it. You know, I, I saw somebody, somebody uh, did a drawing it's a, 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 a picture drawing of a, a, a church member, a lady, who came to pastor for prayer. In the picture, there was a knife that, that, uh, that pierced her from her back. A knife pierced her. So she was bleeding and going to pastor for prayer. No, no, that, and then the pastor had multiple knives. She had only one. Had multiple knives that were piercing him at the same time. He had multiple knives piercing him from different directions. Yet he still prayed for her and helped her out. Why? Because when you are on the front line, trying to get folks to be saved, to be delivered, the enemy targets you specially. Years ago, I had a, I had a, a crusade. We are into crusade ministry. We challenged demons in their strongholds. I had a crusade ministry in Africa years ago. In that crusade, there was one young boy who was violently insane for 10 years. But this young guy, he was living among refuse. He was like the gathering demoniac in Mark 5. He was, he was insane. If you go near him, he would throw pebbles at you. That's how he lived. Like he lived like that for 10 years. He came to the crusade ground by the power. As I was preaching, the power of God fell. The demons left him. He was hit by God instantly. He came back to his senses. He said, wow, wow, what happened to me? We took the, my, my team took him. We had to wash him. He has not bad, taken the bath for years. They had to bath him, put clothes on him. That's how God delivered that guy. But that very night, hear me. I'm sensitive to say what I was saying next. That very night, as he was being delivered, we did the crusade about, about, um, about five hours trip, driving trip from my city where I'm based. One of my staff's wife came to stay with my children at home they were young then while my wife and my team were in the crusade ground so that very night that madman was delivered this lady who was staying with my children saw a demon came to my house far where i was living the demon came through the kitchen say a, a, a woman with a dracula teeth teeth at least and long teeth with the spear in her hand she came is this reverend jima's house if that's my name is it reverend jima's house he said, yeah, yeah. So she entered the kitchen and took his uh, spear up, trying to stab, pierce my children, when 
a wall of fire arose. The wall of fire surrounded this lady with my children. They were surrounded by a wall of fire. And this demon was now outside the wall of fire. Now, my family was inside the fire. The flesh no hurt. She was outside the fire. She began to scream. It's burning me. Burning. Hey, hey, burning me. She ran away. She departed. She couldn't do any harm. The fire of God kept my family preserved and protected. My point is this. When you are doing the work of God, demons attack you specially. That's the point. <laughs> they attack you specially. That's the point. That, that's, why, that's why you need to stick to your faith. You need to be like a Holy Ghost bulldog. You need to be wild in the spirit. That's me. I don't, I don't mess with devils. I come against them with thunderous effect. Because the devil is not a gentleman, I often say. That guy is rough. You must deal with him roughly. You don't pet the devil. You deal with him roughly. Christ says, in my name, you cast out devils. You don't say, devils, devil, please, please leave me alone. You know, let me enjoy my peace. Oh, you say, really? Okay. You are the type I want. He will use you for breakfast and lunch and dinner. Or you say, devil, I rebuke you. Come out in the name of Jesus. He said, Ooh, this one knows what he's talking about. This one means business. That's how to handle the devil. But that's only possible when we walk by faith in God. Faith in God is very vital. So that we can enjoy God's pleasure. We can enjoy God's grace. We can be protected from perdition. Our forever can be secured in him. And we can have victory over the powers of darkness. I close with this verse. First John chapter 5 and verse 4 says, Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. I, I like that verse. First John 5 and verse 4. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. Whatever is born of God overcome the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our unbelief. Is that what it says? No, even our faith. Say faith. There you go. This is the victory that conquers the world, even our faith. So our faith is God is vital because it is the only way we conquer demons. You can't overcome demons without faith. You can't do that. If you are, you are filled with fear and unbelief, demons ride on you. The devil celebrates people, likes people who are weak. Oh, what do I do? I don't know what to do. What's, why this is happening to me like this? What devil likes those people. He can take care of them very well. But when you stand by faith, say, devil, the Bible says God is on my side. The Bible says the Lord is my strength. I'm strong in him. The devil will say, wow, better give that guy space. <laughs> give that guy some space. <laughs> you know what he's talking about. See, so, so faith in God is your weapon against the devil. He says, this is the victory which overcomes the world, even our faith. So without faith, we can't overcome the world. No. This is why there are many believers in the churches today who are so defeated. Who are so weak spiritually. Why? Their faith is weak. Many don't take time to read their Bible. They don't fill their heart with God's word. They don't confess God's word. They don't spend time with God in prayer on a daily basis. They are not in the house of God to be taught the word of God by those whom God anointed to teach his word to his people. There's something special about the ministry that God has put in the church. I said last verse, but let, let's do one more. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 11. Ephesians 4, 11 tells us something very vital, which I want to, want to end with. It says here, Ephesians 4, 11, And he, talking about Jesus, gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. So Jesus Christ set in the church five-fold ministry gifts. Some are apostles, some are prophets, some are evangelists, some are pastors, and some are teachers. Based on the word of God. It's very strange that many people think that there are no apostles today. But they think that there are pastors today, they think so. Then in the same verse, if there are no more apostles today, there should be no pastors today. 
same verse. Right? Same verse. Same verse. So if there are pastors today, then there are apostles. There are prophets, there are evangelists, there are teachers. God set them in the church. And look at the next verse 12. Why? For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the defining of the body of Christ, until when? Till we all come in the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, under the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Glory to God. Next verse 14. That we henceforth be no more children. That's my point. Children, tossed to and fro, tossed to and fro. That's verse 14. So we need this ministry gives helps us to mature in Christ and not be babies in Christ who, who are told pushed to and fro. They will kick them here, they will kick them there. They are so fearful, so faithless. No, the ministry gives is put by God to equip the church to be strong in God. Strong in God. Glory be to God. Faith in God is vital because faith in God, I wrap up now. Faith in God. Gives us access to God's pleasure. God is pleased with us. Faith in God gives us access to God's grace. We can assess God's grace and great things happen in our lives. Faith in God saves us from perdition. Faith in God helps us to secure our forever. Our eternity is secure with faith in God. And faith in God gives us victory over demons, over darkness. With faith in God, we are victorious over the works of the evil one. Someone say, thank you, Jesus. Let's thank God now for the gift, for the privilege of faith in God. If you will, let's please bow our heads and close our eyes. Lord, we thank you for the privilege of having faith in God. We thank you, Lord, for loving us the way you do. You love us so much, Jesus. You died to save us. And we have faith in you. We have faith in you. Glory, we have faith in you, Lord. Thank you for dying to save us. We place our faith on you, Jesus, our Savior, our Redeemer. Blessed be your name forevermore. Glory to God. With our eyes closed, our heads bowed. Anyone here and those who are watching, you are saying, man of God, I want to place my faith in Jesus. I want to be sure that I am born again. I want to give my life to the Lord Jesus Christ now. If you are like that, just stretch your hands towards your screen or towards the altar if you are here in the house and pray with me with all of your heart. Say, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I believe in you. Lord Jesus, I place my faith in you. You are my Savior. You are my Redeemer. You are my God forevermore. I will serve you, Lord. I will live for you, Lord, forever and forever. Blessed be your name, my Lord. Glory to God in the highest. Lord, we thank you. Lord, I pray for everyone tonight. Everyone here in this service right now in person, all those who are watching, I release the power of God upon everyone today. In the name of Jesus, I come against unbelief, doubt, and fear. Unbelief, doubt, and fear, I command you in the name of Jesus. Come out of the people's lives in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. I break every yoke of devils. I command demonic bondage to break in pieces now in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Let faith arise, O God, in every heart. Let faith in God arise. Let faith in God arise afresh in everyone. That that faith will push us every day to read our Bibles. Every day to live for Jesus. Every day to walk in His presence. Every time to be in His house. Every time to love our neighbors. Every time to spend time talking to God in prayer. In the name of Jesus, the Son of God. Let faith arise everyone for us afresh. Oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, the Son of God. Lord, we give you praise. I want you all to please lift up your voice and begin to release your faith right now against anything that is not of God in your life. Begin to rebuke them. Say, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you. Everything in my life that's not from God, I reject you and I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Yes, yeah, speak to them now. Talk to the mountain. Tell them, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you. 
sickness i rebuke you fear i rebuke you disease i rebuke you disappointment frustration i rebuke you every sinful habit i rebuke you in jesus name i have faith in god tell them i have faith in god by my faith in god i overcome you tell them by my faith in god i overcome you in the name of jesus i rebuke fear tell them rebuke it rebuke doubt rebuke unbelief in the name of lord rebuke sickness and disease rebuke every demonic power tear down every demonic stronghold tell them you have faith in god by your faith in god you have power them you overcome them in the name of jesus of nazareth release your faith proclaim your faith announce your faith in the name of jesus declare it in the name of jesus of nazareth lord we give you thanks we have faith in god by our faith in god we overcome darkness we overcome the devil we prevail over every work of the wicked one in the mighty name of jesus of nazareth lord we thank you by our faith in you we procure your pleasure in our lives glory to god by our faith in you father we assess your grace glory to god by our faith in you oh god we are saved from perdition by our faith in you oh god we are secured of eternity by our faith in you oh god we overcome every work of evil in the name of jesus of nazareth lord we thank you we honor you and give you praise and now i speak to every sickness and disease i cast them now in the name of jesus I speak to every power of darkness, every demonic power. I command you, lose your hold. Let go of God's people now. In the mighty name of Jesus, the God of all the earth. God, we give you praise and glory. Blessed be your name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. What a wonderful God you are. Someone say, thank you, Lord Jesus. Say, thank you, Lord Jesus. Say, Lord, 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 say, Lord thank you that I came hallelujah praise god this happens here every monday like this every monday 7 p.m we are here glory to god if i were you i would try not to miss <laughs> every monday we are here to get some fire from heaven like this every monday night we are here for the spirit and the word every monday night and like i announced earlier by the last monday of this month we have a program called uh monthly special miracle program on the screen right now it's called the spirit and the word april 24th by 10 a.m right here it's called the spirit and the world we have fantastic music we have preaching of the word of god we have god's power moving among us this coming this uh, 24th of april please help us to share it among all those you care about invite your friends and your neighbors to be a part of this service with us uh, okay it's not here on the screen so right here on the 24th of this month by 10 a.m we'll be here for the spirit and the word if you like we can send it to you on, on your phone so you can be able to share it with the those who you care about to be a part of that service with us now we serve the god who owns the heavens and the earth correct the Bible says the earth is the laws and the fullness thereof the world and they that do it therein everything belongs to our god guess what he's our father Ah, what belongs to him belongs to us therefore we are able to give to support his work so feel free to give tonight whatever you you, you, are, you are giving to the, to the glory of god we have different ways of giving we'll see it on the screen we can give we can do a um, cash up we can do zell we can mail in donations into the house here we can also give on our website our website is available on, on the screen there and uh, on our Zell is partners at israelgman.org. Our cash app is what you see there. Different ways you can support what the Lord is doing here. And you support the, the work, the Lord blesses you even more and more by His grace and His power. I want to thank you all for coming out part of this in person tonight. I want to I want to to encourage you to make it your your Monday night vitamins you know what i mean <laughs> come and invite some friends to come with you and uh, you'll be glad that you did the lord bless you so much thanks for being with us tonight you have a wonderful night and uh, in jesus name we are dismissed god bless you all praise god